of those big, beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Oh yeah. Ooh, that fish is in the drag big time. That's a big fish right there. Whoop. Oh, look at that. And that fish pulled off a bunch of line. Not huge, just a fighter. Not small either. <laughs> Husky rainbow right there. Look at that guy, long, lean, what a beautiful fish. Clean tail, chrome bright. He's gonna have bright red meat. Um, just doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Folks, Kel Kellogg here. Um, one of our viewers named Shane reached out with a question about fly trolling and uh, I thought it was a good question. He went back, he looked at a bunch of my fly trolling videos and he noticed some inconsistency there and uh, he asked me about attaching flies to the leader. But uh, before we get into that, let me just review what we're talking about in case some folks out there aren't familiar with, with what we're talking about. If you watch the channel, you see me fish, you know, troll flies a lot. Here's a trolling fly. This is an action disc that is threaded on the leader, typically the leader material ranges anywhere from eight to 12 pound test fluorocarbon. And that disc right there gives the fly a very unique action. So that's kind of the background. I troll them anywhere from one to two miles an hour and uh, they're, they're super effective and they're super effective at fooling big trout. So that's the background. But the question from Shane was, do I use or should we use a perfection loop knot to attach the fly to give the fly more freedom of motion, okay? Now, in some instances, I think that would be, that would be a positive. Um, lures like, say, a Rapala, something like that. You don't want a tight knot to a Rapala because it will interfere with the action. You want it to be able to move. Um, likewise, if you're tying on a hook, you don't want San Francisco Bay to fish live bait. You want that anchovy to have complete freedom of movement. You don't want him tight to the leader. So you tie that hook on with a loop to give the bait, you know, some freedom of movement, some freedom to move around, put out those vibrations that draw in predators. So, with my fly rigging, Early on, I was advocating, my little disc slid down to the other end of the leader. Early on, I was advocating putting a bobber stop. And I'll get back to the knot in a second. Early on, I was advocating putting a bobber stop between the wiggle disc and the fly so you could move the bobber stop away from the fly and alter the fly's action. It is true. You can alter the fly's action. But what I have found to be best is running that disc right on the nose of the fly. You get maximum vibration that way. You want that vibration transferred to the fly. You've got all these, all these flashy materials in the fly. When it gets wet, it puts out tremendous flash. It's a very unique presentation. Um, with that disc running right on the nose of the fly. I mean, you're getting that kind of kind of rattle trap style, you know, hard vibration. So I don't run the bobber stop anymore. If you were to use a perfection loop knot or something like that, I think it would accomplish the same thing that the, or, 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 or have the same effect as the bobber stop. I think it would kill a lot of the action, uh, you know, being transferred from the disc 
to the fly. I think that that little bit of slack there to give the fly, you know, theoretical freedom of movement, well, I think that would kill the action transfer from the wiggle disc to the fly. We don't necessarily want the fly, or we, we don't want the fly to have freedom of movement. We want its movement imparted by that disc, and we want a direct drive. We want as much of that disc action going into the wing of that fly as possible. So here's what I do. So I'm rigging them now. I'm running, I've been running with 12 pound test fluoro. Um, I attach the fly with a Palomar knot. I leave a little tag in, you can probably see that right there. Um, just, just for insurance, it doesn't hurt anything. And I run that disc right on the nose of the fly. I'm running these leaders about 40 inches long. Sometimes I put a just a loop up top, or if I have some, I'll, I'll put a little barrel swivel like that. And I'll attach right here, you know, my main line that comes down to a trolling swivel, I'll attach right there. Typically, no blades, no flashers, no nonsense. Put the fly in the water, a mile and a half to two miles an hour, that's the sweet spot. You can slow down to one, you can bump it up to two, 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 three. Um, they will hit them going faster. Um, I have just had the best luck from, from one five, one eight, two miles an hour. My biggest, my biggest trout trolling so far was a seven pound rainbow at El Menor. And uh, right before that fish hit, I had spiked my speed up to about 2.1 and I was just starting to slow back down to one eight when that fish hit. So. Anyway, Shane, I hope that helps. That's my current thoughts on trolling flies. And remember, I, I've played with flies for years. I fly fished a ton. But in terms of trolling flies and really, really trying to dial it in, I've only been at this for about two years. So I'm always giving you guys the most current information I have, my most current approach. But uh, as I experiment, um, my approaches change and that's reflected in the videos. And I would encourage you guys to do the same thing. When you're out on the water, you're in the laboratory. That's the place to experiment. Remember, little tweaks can, can make big changes in results. I'm convinced I've caught way more fish running that disc right on the nose of the fly than when I have that little tiny bobber stop in between. It might be a confidence thing, it might be real whatever. I retied all my leaders. I took all the bobber stops off. So anyway, go figure. Um, I'm Cal Kellogg. I'm signing off. Hope that, that I hope, I can't even talk. I hope that helps you guys catch, catch some extra fish this season. Um, if you haven't tried trolling flies, get some flies. They are a hoot to troll. A lot of fun, a lot of big fish on flies. It's just a very unique presentation. Anyway, I will catch you next time uh, right here on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit it. And if you're looking for gear, fishhuntshoot.com. That's where you'll find all my tackle rods, reels, spoons, more, all that good stuff at a very fair price. Gear that just flat out performs on the water. I'm Cal Kellogg. I will see you soon. Thanks, guys.